Hello guys, welcome to Inspiring Minds. This is Dr. Anil Mahajan. In the last section, I have promised we will discuss about the upper and more motor neuron concept. So in this video, we will talk about facial palsy, upper and lower motor neurons, that all the tracts of spinal cord, its application and the brown sequard syndrome and we will revise it at the end. So in the last section of the video, I have discussed about the spinal cord tracts, which were basically the ascending and descending tracts. The ascending tracts are the sensory tracts, which are taking up the sensation to the higher motor centers. And the descending tract is the motor tract. The one tract I have discussed, which comes under the pyramidal system about corticospinal tract and the corticonuclear tract. So friends, now we will discuss about the concept of upper motor neuron and more lower motor neuron. What happens? This is the upper motor neuron and it is making a synapse with the lower motor neuron. This upper motor neuron is present in the cerebral cortex and in the brain stem and the lower motor neuron present in the brain stem as well as the spinal cord. What happens? That upper motor neuron that having a modulatory action on the lower motor neuron and lower motor neuron is controlling the skeletal muscle. Modulatory action means either upper motor neuron can stimulate or either it can inhibit the lower motor neurons. So whenever any person is having the lesion at the level of upper motor neuron, the lower motor neuron will be set free. When the lower motor neuron will be set free, then the skeletal muscles, the lower motor, motor neuron is controlling will undergo para, uh, spastic paralysis free to fire the lower motor neuron will be free to fire because there is nobody to modulate the lower motor neuron action so what happens in the upper motor neuron lesion the lower motor neuron is set free and the skeletal muscles will go spastic paralysis one note to keep in mind always while solving the mcqs that whenever there is a lesion to the upper motor neuron the person is having the spastic paralysis that means the tone of the muscles is increased and the reflexes are increased hyperreflexia and whenever there is a lesion to the lower motor neuron we have the flaccid paralysis the tone is decreased and the hyperreflexia i have told you the lesion about the upper motor neuron so one clinical case is there that the lower motor neuron is directly damaged Whenever there is a directly damage to the lower motor neuron, we see the flaccid paralysis will occur ipsilateral side flaccid paralysis. But the clinical case is whenever any person is infected with the virus, which is polio virus. Polio virus causes the damage to the anterior horn cells. That means the lower motor neuron we are talking about and causes the ipsilateral flaccid paralysis. Now, about the descending tract in the spinal cord, I have told you about corticospinal tract and corticonuclear tract, which comes under the pyramidal system. We need to know if the fibers are always passes through the posterior limb of the internal capsule when we are talking about the corticospinal tract. But in the corticonuclear tract, the fibers passes through the genio of the internal capsule. The main motto of telling you about the fibers from where they are passing in both the tracts because of one concept which is about the facial nerve palsy. What happens usually whenever there is a viral infection to a person, especially the herpes virus infection or the compression of the facial nerve, we have, we see the lower motor neuron palsy of the facial nerve and we call it as Bell's palsy and the features are ipsilateral phallacid paralysis and whenever we have any ischemia to the genio of the internal capsule we see the upper motor neuron palsy over up, and here the upper face is spared how the upper face is spared here i tell you we need to keep in mind one more note which is the upper face is having the bilateral supply that means from the left side of the brain and from the right side of the brain the upper face muscles are having the bilateral supply but the lower face muscles, for example, or orbicularis oris, these are having the contralateral supply. That means from the other side of the brain. If right side is being supplied, but the supply is being coming from the contralateral side. Here you can see it in the diagram about the node 
I have told you the muscles of the upper face the muscles of the upper face are being supplied from both the sides you can see these are the upper motor neurons these are the upper motor neurons in the pink and they are supplying to both the sides here and there but to the lower muscle lower face muscles the supply is only from the contralateral side the supply is only from the contralateral side so whenever a person comes with the right side lower face muscle palsy you need to always think about the person is having a stroke the clinical condition stroke what happens in the stroke there is the upper motor neuron lesion if the right side of the lower face of the muscles are damaged that means the left side lesion is there so it is upper motor neuron lesion now whenever the facial muscle palsy is after the synapse here the synapse has been done of upper motor neuron and from there the lower motor neuron supply will start that means the facial nerve whenever there is the person is having viral infection or the person is having any kind of facial nerve compression the muscles of both the upper upper uh, side of the face and the lower face muscles both are affected because the upper face muscles are being supplied by the uh, uh, ipsilateral side as well as the contralateral side but the lower face muscles are only being supplied by the contralateral side this is about the facial nerve palsy so in a nutshell facial nerve palsy can be due to the upper motor neuron palsy or lower motor neuron palsy and the fibers i have told you is the corticonucleate tract fibers always passes through the genu of the internal capsule since the corticonucleate tract controls the muscles of the face and eye okay so next about the brown sequard syndrome so friends from the last video we have discussed the tracts of the spinal cord so we will revise it over here in the section brown sequard syndrome what happens there is one clinical condition which is brown sequard syndrome you can see the one section of the spinal cord has been transacted or damaged for example in the clinical case scenario a person has undergone a very severe road traffic accident and there occurs the t10 section of the spinal cord has been totally damaged and while teaching the uh, about the tracts in the spinal cord i have told you the tracts and its functions so let us see that means i have told you the one side side of the spinal cord has been transacted so the first tract we were we have discussed already about the uh, dorsal column system fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus which makes the dorsal column medial and meniscus system it is a ascending tract and carrying which sensations touch fine touch we need to keep in mind fine touch pressure vibration stereognosis and conscious proprioception the hemi section of the spinal cord this tract it is also damaged okay the the person will having the manifestations the another tract we have discussed about the spino cerebellar tract and in the last video i have told you the cerebellar lesions are always ipsilateral and we had the dorsal spino cerebellar tract and the ventral spino cerebellar tract the main function of this tract for the unconscious it carries the unconscious proprioception and lesion to this tract leads to ataxia in brown sequard syndrome if the one section of the spinal cord has been transacted all these tracts present will be gone and the sensations we, uh, we, the person would be lost another tract i have told you about which is present over here it is spinothalamic tract and spinothalamic tract always bring from, bring the this, uh, bring the information from the contralateral side of the body like anterior spinothalamic tract carries touch which is a crude touch and pressure and lateral spinothalamic tract carries about the pain and temperature information so if the right side of the spinal cord has been transacted that means the temperature sensations where it will we will lose on the left side but one concept is there that when this spinothalamic tract is damaged whether it is on left uh, for example it, it is damaged on the right side but we will see the manifestations two to three segments below the manifestations we will see two to three segments below the person is going to have the temperature loss pain loss 
crude touch loss in pressure why because all these receptors which are carrying these sensations they always uh, cross fibers or ascend start to ascend up two segments above the spinal cord that means if the lesion is there in the t10 segment the sensations lost must be from t12 till the down the another tract we have discussed about the pyramidal tract which is the cortico spinal tract and carrying the upper motor neuron lesions whenever there is the lesion to the pyramidal tract or the cortico spinal tract we have the upper motor neuron which is not working or lesion then i have told you in the note the upper motor neuron lesions are always gives us spastic paralysis so you can see over here the loss of temperature the transaction has been occurred here the loss of pain and temperature sensations occurs two segments below then uh, due to the upper motor neuron fibers damage spastic paralysis you can see here hypotonia of the muscles occur at the level of lesion at the level of lesion the flaccid paralysis is seen but uh, uh, below the level we see the spastic paralysis why because the in the spinal cord we have the presence of anterior horn cells too that means the lower motor neuron to add the level of this lesion upper motor neurons okay has been damaged but the lower motor neuron at the same level of the tract has been damaged to that why that is why in the brown sequard syndrome we see the flaccid paralysis at the level of the lesion and spastic paralysis below the level of the lesion another thing i have told you about the pyramidal system the function of the pyramidal system is to make us to its make up make us to do fine and skilled voluntary movement activity and we have extra pyramidal system too which includes the basal ganglia and other parts but like for example i have told you to play a violin which is a very skilled movement to play a violin first of all our cortico nuclear tract will get activated cortico nuclear tract will get activated which controls the face muscles and the hand muscles and another the cortico spinal tract will get activated while playing but to do that activity we need to plan this activity to make a, make it happen and it is done by the extra pyramidal system and about the basal ganglia what happens basal ganglia is basically whenever we need to study we need we study about its nuclei which are four structural nuclei and one functional nuclei which is structural nuclei are cordate putamen globus pallidus and amygdala about the functional nuclei subthalamic and substantia nigra in the video when i have discussed about the nervous system development i have told you which part is present where from the subthalamic all the uh, all the suffix which we, whenever we have a suffix of thalamus we always say this part has been developed from diencephalon and this substantia nigra is present in the mesencephalon part so this is all about the concept of upper motor lower motor neuron lesions facial palsy and about the pyramidal system so friends to understand this video properly and nicely do watch our video on the spinal cord tracts on the inspiring minds youtube channel if you have any doubt on this topic you can download the telegram app and can ask the doubt over there in the inspiring mind study partners thank you